What's up guys? In this video we'll be taking a look at Harmony of Dissonance, the second Metroidvania contained in the Advanced Collection. Due to some of its design choices such as the map layout and its soundtrack, Harmony of Dissonance took a lot of heat when it was released. And I'll tell you all about it, both the good and the bad. And all I ask in return is that you hit that like button and subscribe. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you Castlevania, Harmony of Dissonance. If Circle of the Moon not only took a few cues from Symphony of the Night and expanded upon them, Harmony of Dissonance tried its best to resemble the 32-bit smash hit, all while still bringing new mechanics. Let's get right to them. The first one is the combat mechanics. Ecclesia had glyphs, Circle had the colossal card system, which was reborn in the Advanced Collection. I'll leave the link for my video about it right now, for your convenience. Symphony had spells, special attacks, transformations and familiars. And Harmony has the spellbook system. And the most interesting aspect is that it makes use of sub-weapons, which are largely ignored by a lot of players in most Metroidvanias. When paired with an element contained in a specific book, each sub-weapon will perform a different attack, and they're all expressively different from one another. And I'm pretty sure you and I will have different combos of choice due to our different playing styles. Mine was the Bible plus the Lightning Book. You'll summon two bits straight out of Gradius, and this is not only very damaging, but it also makes going back and forth a much easier process. And trust me, you will be doing that a lot. The other aspect that sets Harmony apart from its peers is the fact that while dashing would end up being a special skill acquired and backstabbing had a small cooldown time, in Harmony those can be done in extremely rapid succession. Not only this allows for some pretty nimble combat, but also it's a must due to this game's core element, the exploration. And as in any Metroidvania, exploring yields all sorts of accessories and pieces of armor. What sets Harmony of Dissonance apart from its peers is that besides your armor, you can equip up to three accessories. So yes, instead of going for a boot, you can for example equip another pendant. This can be pretty useful at times. Now let's move on to the eye candy department. As you're seeing here, Harmony of Dissonance does wonders for a Game Boy Advance game. While Circle of the Moon was a more than respectable first attempt at a Metroidvania after Symphony of the Night and it certainly looked good, it was clear that the graphics were simpler. And it's understandable, it was a first attempt at making a Metroidvania for the Game Boy Advance. However, with the experience acquired in Circle of the Moon, a much, much prettier game was created. Certain sacrifices had to be made, but we'll get to them in a bit. We could almost start getting a Nintendo DS feel in terms of visuals. The castle was much more complex in terms of looks and had some really stunning and sometimes creepy locations. Many were the times where I found myself redoing a specific room just so I could take another look at it. Like this beautiful crystal cave. I mean, take a look at it, it's amazing. And make sure to watch this video until the very end because I'll be discussing this game's creepy side. It's one of Harmony of Dissonance's best elements and efforts and no one seems to notice this. However, there is one downside in the graphics department, which I'll mention right now instead of leaving for later in the video, like I always do. But after some research, I found out that this was actually done on purpose. You see, the most common complaint players had with Circle of the Moon was that due to the absence of a backlight in the console, the game was just too dark to see. So, in order to try and counter this, Iga and his team made things look brighter than they normally would. This doesn't erase the issue on the big screen, but it's a nice piece of info to know. And now, let's jump right into the Indiana Vania factor. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk exploration. Remember Dragon Ball Z, where certain characters would perform the fusion dance and become a mix of both of them? And remember how you screamed like a little schoolgirl at her first boy band concert when you first saw it? Oh, admit it, you did that too. We all did. Well, answer me this, real quick. What do you get when you cross Alucard and Indiana Jones? If your answer was Juiced Belmont, then you are correct because that's exactly what Harmony of Dissonance feels like, a new subgenre of Castlevania, the Indianavania. And I'm gonna start off by saying that yes, this is where things went and will go sour for a lot of people. You see, while Symphony of the Night also required special items like the gold and silver rings, the spike breaker armor, the mist and so on and so forth, all of the core elements of those things were acquired in the first castle. In the upside down castle, most key items you'd find would be Dracula's remains, which you needed to tell your dad to take a hike and trouble the soul of her mother no more. And I'm joking, but you know, this was one very powerful line delivered by Robert Belgrade. He did a very good job here. In the Harmony of Dissonance, however, alternating between normal and chaos versions of the castle in search of where to go next oftentimes felt convoluted, and with reason. 
You see, I understand that they went with this design choice because of the Game Boy Advance limitations. Featuring the same sprites for the castle in different colors was a smart way to save resources and increase the play area. However, this issue still stands. And all of this exploration will yield you a lot of stuff. And here's where the gadget system comes in handy. In here, gadget serves as means to keep track of key items such as spell books or collectibles, as in a dynamic checklist. And that's certainly welcome. Only not as critical as it was in Circle of the Moon. And also, if you head over to the encyclopedia, you'll be able to see every spellbook and sub-item combination possible, making it easier for you to make your own choices. What's also very welcome is the number of bosses you get to face in this game. There's quite a lot of them, and most of the designs are quite impressive for a Game Boy Advance title. Harmony of Dissonance has my favorite version of one of my favorite bosses in the franchise, the Grand Falloon Corpse, or Legion as we know it. With each of your attacks, it bleeds profusely, eventually revealing a demonic face inside with its slave, trying to close off its outer shell to protect its core. And if you think Grand Falloon is a random word, let me tell you right now, it isn't. It's an extremely interesting concept in psychology, making this enemy's concept even creepier. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to make a video about it, I'd certainly love to do so. And still in the boss's apartment, I'd always enter the next boss arena wondering what I'd see. With the exception of the STUPID giant slime, seriously, who the hell thought this would be a good boss? Most of them look really cool. They're not nearly as hard as they were in Circle of the Moon, but they still serve their purpose. And listen, if you've watched my Circle of the Moon video, then you probably noticed that I blurred out the two or three times Dracula showed up on screen. And that's because I don't want to spoil it for people who never played it. Hell, I get a lot of comments saying, hey man, this is the first time I'm playing Circle of the Moon, thanks for the hard work, amazing video, you know, it's, it's awesome, it's nice, I love getting this interaction with you guys. However, I have to show you Dracula's final form in Harmony of Dissonance. It's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of weird shit in my life. If you don't want it spoiled for you, then skip to the timecode that's displaying on the screen right now. So, going once... Going twice. Bam! Seriously, what in the fiery pits of hell is this? This shit should have been in the Evil Within series, which I will be reviewing in their anniversaries this October, so stay tuned and subscribe. You know, when I first fought him, he actually got a free hit on me because I stood there thinking, what the fuck am I looking at? This surely gave a lot of children nightmares. And even some grown ups too, but they'll never admit it, of course. I didn't have him. <laughs> <laughs> Mom? And now, let's get to Harmony of Dissonance's most controversial aspect, its soundtrack. If you read about Harmony online, it won't take you 30 seconds to find someone saying that the soundtrack sucked. And listen, I'm not about to counter those people's stasis, alright? If you didn't do it for them, I respect that. And I can also understand why a lot of people say it sucks. You see, in order to accommodate the graphical superiority this game has in relation to Circle of the Moon, certain sacrifices had to be made. And the soundtrack was one of them. If you've ever played Samurai Showdown at the arcades and then their console counterparts, then you're surely no stranger to this concept. The Super Nintendo version had much smaller sprites while still retaining every single character, whereas the Genesis version had much bigger and detailed sprites but had the character Earthquake removed. And the end result in Harmony of Dissonance is that sometimes you'd feel like you were playing two different games. The graphics quality and the simplicity of the soundtrack felt highly dissonant from one another. Oh, the irony. However, that's not to say there aren't good songs in this game, far from it. The name Enter Screen has one of my favorite songs ever in the franchise. It's weird, foreboding and creepy. Now, if you really want to know what the soundtrack could have sounded like had the Game Boy Advance enough capabilities for it to do so, then just listen to the ending credits song in the music gallery. It's stellar. And this game also has multiple endings, with the one where you fight the free trip to the shrink Dracula being the best one. You see, Iga isn't exactly known for writing the most complex plotlines ever, but this was a nice little touch us Castlevania fans always enjoy. And now, for the moment some of you are certainly curious for, the creepy factor. This is something which sets Harmony of Dissonance apart from most of its peers, with the exception of Bloodlines on the Genesis. You see, even though Castlevania games have always presented as bats, mermen, skulls, medusa heads and such, unless you were a kid, they wouldn't exactly feel scary or creepy. However, in Harmony of Dissonance, the violence and weird factor have been intentionally amped up. Take a look at this section in the caves. You hit a lever and the platform you're standing on begins rising. Once you reach the top, you'll see a giant troll crushed to death. It was his blood that made the platform rise. 
There's also the lab section with head abominations inside those giant tubes. Pushing an enemy into the grinder and then getting his armor and the aforementioned Grand Falloon corpse, which bled profusely every time you attacked it. And also, take a look at the background, there's blood everywhere. And I really like what Konami did here, it's just a shame that they never went the creepy path again. And still on the soundtrack department, with its dissonant melodies, Harmony of Dissonance has the creepiest soundtrack in the entire franchise. But that's not there is here. If you listen to some of the songs, you'll see that some of them are empowering, they're bold, they're brave songs. Really, really good stuff here. Head over to the music gallery and spend a few minutes with them. You'll be delighted. And now, let's talk extras. They all come after beating the game once, and there's one in particular that made me giggle in a very positive way. This would be the first Metroidvania to include a boss rush mode. And if you're a Devil May Cry hellspawn such as myself, then it's in your blood. Try and demolish things as quickly as possible. Let me know your best time in the comments. Let's see who's fastest. You also get to play as Maxim, Juice's best friend. But, I, you know, I gotta be honest here, man. This is the worst secondary character I've ever played as in any Metroidvania. His animations are downright ugly and sloppy. Really, Maxim screams low effort. And a peculiar extra is that if after beating the game you input the Konami code at the Konami logo, you'll get to play as Simon Belmont. This is challenging, fun and interesting. I really appreciated this. Oh yeah, it's hard as shit. And speaking of hard, there's also a hard mode for all of you aces out there. And if you're anything like myself, then you're gonna go for this. And lastly, there's a forced no spells mode too. Feel like testing out your raw combat power? This is the mode for you. And listen, before we get to Harmony of Dissonance's downsides, and unfortunately, there are plenty of them, I'd like to say that for those of you who feel like helping me make more videos like this more frequently, I have both a patron and a buy me a coffee system in place. But there's no gatekeeping here, there's no tiers of rewards. No, everyone will always have access to everything I create, both on Instagram and YouTube. You know, whether they donate or not, and this is a conscious choice of mine. You see, monetizing my channel is almost within reach, but as of yet, making videos doesn't yield me a single cent. You see, Alan Wake's remaster is just around the bend, and being the well-written horror fan that I am, I have every intention of making a video about the original game for you guys before the remaster is out. However, since I still did my daytime job, I'm not sure I'll make it in time. Which is really a shame, because Alan Wake deserves the Balmont treatment. I'll pull graveyard shifts to try and make it happen though, let's see. Now, of course, you guys have nothing to do with this, those are my choices. And being the Belmont that I am, I'll fight alone if I have to, I'm always ready for it, it's in my blood. However, if you feel like joining me in this awesome fight, then your efforts will be much appreciated. Really, thank you. I'll leave the links on the description. Now, alright, it's time for Harmony's ugly side, it's shortcomings. The first one is Juiced's room. You see, as you explore the castle, you find an empty space that for some ungodly reason, Juice decides to make look prettier. I don't know why. And the result is that there's a lot of furniture for you to get throughout the castle. Once he returns to Indiana Justice's room, he'll go full Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. I love this guy, by the way. He single-handedly almost make me choose a different career path. And here lies a big problem. In any exploration-based game, good rewards have to exist. Hell, even Circle of the Moon was at fault in this. Like I said in its review, many of its loose ends contain nothing but heart, MP or HP increases. But you know, they were still useful, and while those certainly are present in Harmony of Dissonance, the amount of furniture you're gonna get will make your eyes roll. Going somewhere and have the time being rewarded with a table or a tea set is annoying. And while not exactly grave in terms of gameplay, since Harmony of Dissonance is much easier than Circle of the Moon, this game has one of the biggest fuck-ups I've ever seen in any game. And yes, for you veterans out there, I am talking about the merchant. So, a standard video game merchant works like this. He either sets up shop in one place, like Hammer did in Aria Sorrow, or travels throughout the game so you can buy stuff from him again. Just like it was in Final Fantasy X, it had one of my favorite merchants ever. Welcome to Oakus. Pretty simple, right? Now, I don't know what Iga and his team drank when they were creating Harmony of Dissonance, but they somehow managed to fuck up one of every game's most basic aspects. In order for you to meet the merchant, you'll have to meet some of the dumbest requirements I've ever seen. Having the noon star, being above level 50, having a level in odd numbers, having an even number of hearts. I mean, really, why? 
can you really imagine a salesman thinking, that man has a lot of money, but no. Unless his level is an odd number, I'm not selling him this potion. Who does he think he is, coming in here at level 2 instead of 3? The nerve. And now's the time for my final verdict. While I certainly appreciate all the efforts that were made to make Harmony of Dissonance look very pretty, I simply cannot ignore how convoluted the exploration can sometimes feel, and this makes the game last longer than it actually needed to. Add that to all of the furniture you often find when covering loose ends and the game does end up feeling a little tedious at times. However, once you have all of the keys and special powers needed, the game almost becomes a different experience altogether. And while this is certainly the most flawed out of all Metroidvanias on the Game Boy Advance, it's still definitely a game worth looking into, earning it a respectable 7 out of 10. And stay tuned, because up next, we will discuss the game that, to many, is the apex of Game Boy Advance Metroidvanias, the colossal Aria of Sorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bow out.